see here. Yes, we are live. <laughs> here we go. Happy and succeeding in the future of work. Today, we have a special guest, great guy. He's from the UK. So if he, if he speaks very funny, you can understand why he's not an American. He actually speaks proper English as opposed to me. So he's going to make me sound like a dumb American by comparison, but I'm going to try to keep up. So we have Nick Goldberg, founder, CEO of Ezra. And Ezra, they do great work, basically is professional coaching. But what I like to do is hand it off to Nick, and then you could tell the audience how you started Ezra, how you disrupted it from a large global organization, and what, what kind of great work do you do? Thanks, Jack. And, and really just, just great to be here with you today and, and, and with the audience. Um, Ezra, so Ezra really came from, from a few different angles. So prior to founding Ezra, I was the CEO of an organization called LHH or Lee Hecht Harrison um, for the UK and Ireland. And, and within Lee Hecht Harrison, we, we ourselves have a, had a few hundred employees and the services that we offered our clients were twofold. One was outplacement services and the other was executive coaching. And we offered executive coaching um, all across the world. And both within our own organization, as we offered coaching to our employees and offered executive coaching to our clients, I really saw over the years of working there, the power, something we now call a superpower at Ezra, that a coach could have on an individual or a group of individuals, and then those individuals could then have on the organization. And whilst I was at LHH, um, we provided this to executives, like many of organizations do today. You know, the top people in an organization receive an executive coach, partly because of the importance of their role, um, partly because the credibility it gives them, and of course, the development that it gives them and the huge impact that it has. Um, and, and within our own organization at LHH a few years ago, we actually offered executive coaching to our own employees. You know, when you work in a, in a car dealership, you get discounts on those cars. And that's one of the benefits that you do. Or when you work in a clothes retail store, you get um, free clothes. And when you worked at LHH, you got coaching. That was part of what happened and part of the benefit. And we saw at LHH, the value that coaching had on even the most junior employees. And about five years ago, I turned to some of my colleagues in the room and I said, why, why are we only offering this to our clients at the most executive level? What are, what are the reasons for that? When we can see how much impact this has throughout the whole company, why are we only giving to the executives? And, and five years ago, we came up with some of the challenges. And one of them was, how do you make it more affordable? How do you use technology? We have this amazing bench of coaches at LHH. How do we scale that? And, and actually, five years ago, when you think about it, Jack, when you, would, you, just, you were just telling me about your kids, when you would FaceTime your kids five years ago, the technology actually wasn't quite good enough to have a really reliable conversation. Um, so we actually parked the idea of, of we, we knew that technology needed to play a role. And actually, five years ago, the solution wasn't there. The bandwidth actually wasn't there for, for, for it to become something. And then we picked this up about three years ago. And we decided that, that as technology advanced, and as services like Teladoc in America became more more adopted and more engaged with, with people all over America and you could see your doctor online, why couldn't you see a coach? So we launched Ezra um, three years ago and, and we launched Ezra within the LHH and the ADECO group. We were kind of incubated and then we've grown up over the last three years and now um, very proud to, to talk about the, the thousands of people and hundreds of thousands of sessions that we run on the platform and the impact that it's having. But, but it came about because we saw the value it had actually, and we wanted to find a way to scale that and democratize that to hundreds or in some cases, thousands of employees in the organizations that we work with. 
So how would it work, Nick? So let's say I work for one of your clients, you know, <clears throat> I'm, I'm, I'm an employee of like XYZ widget company. And my boss feels, hey, Jack has some potential, but he has some rough edges. And I think he could benefit from coaching. So then I, they might turn to you and your organization. And then would it be a series of different sessions or how, how does it play out? Great, great question. And one thing I think is interesting, in fact, even the way you asked the question, Jack, because, because in the past, coaching also has this, this, uh, this kind of, belief, there's a belief in coaching that it's for remedial. It's for when you have a few rough edges. Generally, you know, in the past, people would get a coach when they weren't performing or they had challenges. And actually what Ezra has done and some of the other players in this industry has really changed the, the perception of coaching to it is given to people when they're looking to develop, given to high potentials, given to new managers who are managing for the very first time, given to people who return to work after having a baby. So there are, there are a number of different use cases as to why Ezra is, rather than just seeing it as a remedial, someone's not performing let, let's give it to them. And I think the way that it works to answer your question is we now have contracts with hundreds, soon to be thousands of organizations um, that, have, that, that have been able to make coaching available for many more people in their organization because of the price point that now enables them to do so. And it's a very simple process, really. The, the, the line manager in the organization would probably have a relationship, I'm sure, with HR. HR would have a relationship with Ezra. And the other thing that Ezra has really solved is, is the ease in getting someone started. So once the, the organization has the contract in place and, the, and that person gets approved to, to have an Ezra coach, they simply receive a password to our app. The person downloads the app. And within three clicks, so choosing a coach, scheduling a session, picking a time, the person is then live on the app and they can see a coach that day if they choose a certain coach that's available that day, but always within 24 to 48 hours. And the other thing I'd say just to be clear on Ezra is it's the same coach that you would then have for typically six months in an unlimited fashion. So a lot of our clients talk about it like they have a coach in their pocket that they can use as much as they want whenever they want at a time that suits them to talk about a number of different things that help them be a, a better leader or a or a, a more informed help them have a more informed career or a number of different things that we can go into so it's very very simple so it's interesting what comes first would it become where i might feel uh, i need some additional or i i think if I could get certain coaching, I could take it to the next level or my boss may feel that. So it's not as when I first asked the question, like maybe there is an issue that you need to resolve. It's more of, hey, to get to that next level, we all have to level, when we level up, a lot of times it's not easy. We got to kind of change the way we do things. We have to kind of think differently, act differently, talk differently. So do I come in and say, hey, this is what I'd want or does a coach kind of sense, hmm, maybe we have to work Jack with this, Me, you know, if he wants to get to the managing director level, you know, we've seen so many managing directors, this is kind of the things that you need to do to be playing at that field. Really is, is great it, question. And, 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 and I'd say just to use an analogy, the first thing I'd say is, you know, if, if I want to, to learn how to play golf, that the best way for me to, to, to advance to be a, a decent golfer is to get a golf coach. And, you know, there are many books around practice and habits and so on. And, and I, can, I can have that coach as a sports person and sports people is the best analogy. You know, every sports mm -hmm. person of any, of, any, of any worth has a really good coach and they become and they excel in their profession. The way you talked about what comes first, is it the individual that knows what they need or is it the, the manager or is it the coach? In fact, it's, it's, it's all of the above. And we thought about that when we built Ezra. So we built Ezra in a very configurable and flexible way. So when we work with, let's say, 
um, Spotify. So Spotify use Ezra at scale. And they've decided that at Spotify, to be a successful leader, there are these eight things you need to be really, really good at. And they work with us to identify what are those eight things. And when I, when I work for Spotify as a new leader, when I log into the Ezra app, I will see those eight areas that Spotify believe are the most important things to be successful there. But of course, me as a leader at Spotify, there are three areas that I really want to focus on because I'm actually quite good at those other five things. And there are three things that I need to do. So mm -hmm. I, will, I will choose three of the eight that I want to work on. And then what we do is we've created a really cool, again, easy to, easy to use assessment called the Ezra measure that is all configurable to Spotify's uh, goals and it will be configurable to McDonald's goals or Nestle's goals or whoever the client is that we're working with. And I get to see based on that assessment, I, is it those three things? I thought I was good at those three things, but actually from doing this assessment and my boss doing this assessment, it's, it's two of them and there's one other area I need to focus on. And then I'd have the session with my coach. And in our very first session, we would go through the Ezra results of the Ezra measure. And again, I might change things. I might switch things up. Um, I might even focus on things that aren't necessarily within three. So a combination of the individual, the line manager, the organization, and then the coach almost validating and then working with me over the next six months will really help me improve maybe in just those three, but often in more than those three, often in up to eight. And we've seen the results now, which we can talk about later, but of course we then remeasure people at the end to see whether they've improved. And I know everybody is an individual, but are there certain types of things that are common whether it's learning how to be a public speaker, um, whether it's how to manage people or interact with people better, how to show empathy. Are there any kind of core elements? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, we, and again, we, we, last year, we delivered over 100,000 Ezra sessions and every single um, user that was on the platform did the Ezra measure. So we've got this incredible data that tells us which are the most popular goals that people mm -hmm. are choosing. And I think that there's a few areas. So while we're seeing, you know, anything to do with communication is key. So especially during the pandemic and the way in which even we're talking now through Zoom or, or Teams, the way in which we communicate has become more challenging. Um, you know, body language and just getting a sense of someone when you're not with them is more difficult. So empathy, and influence are two critical areas that we're finding people need real support with. How do I get my message across in the very best way? How do I really understand my team? How do I really understand my boss? Um, managing my career and managing upwards is another critical thing. It's very different, different world. You would go out for, for, for lunch or go out for a drink after work with, with the team and the boss and often relationships are built there. So relationships and communication are critical. The other area that, that people often struggle with as they progress in their career, and again, as I think about how COVID has changed people's work uh, and, and the way in which they work is work-life balance. So work-life balance and mental health is critical to people's way of working. And I find that, and we found that work-life balance is a big goal that people are, are, are trying to, 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 to get around. You know, how do I make sure I'm there to, to give my kids a bath, but also make sure I'm on calls late at night with New York here in London uh, and get that balance well and, and get that balance right. Be there for my team, be there for my family. The lines in which we work are now so blurred that it becomes more and more challenging. So I'd say... Anything to do with communication around empathy, influence, and anything to do with work-life balance. They're the most common areas that people are using coaching for, but that's evolving and that's changing, especially as the world is changing so fast. Yeah, because it's so wild. If we had this conversation five years ago, I don't think we would talk about 
how do I have a balanced life? Because that wasn't a thing. You go to work, you know, you go from wherever you live into London, into the city, uh, wherever you're doing, and you commute back. And that was it is, you know, there really wasn't a yeah. great balance of life. Yeah. I mean, now, I mean, just to absolutely thing. just just to take that to, to another level, even if I think in the last 18 months or a year, 18 months ago, we ran a program at Ezra to because Ezra is so flexible and customizable, uh, we, we realized that during the pandemic, everyone went remote. And we went from everyone being in office to everyone, everyone being remote. There was no hybrid. It was everyone worked from home in most parts of the world. And there was a whole program and set of behaviors you needed to manage your workforce when they were all remote. And that was a huge focus for us. In the last six months, and actually, arguably, that was quite straightforward. It definitely wasn't at the time. We felt, how on earth are we going to do this for all the different reasons that we all know? But it was, it was everyone is at home. Now, I can tell you in my office as the CEO of an organization, you know, some people, we, we, offer, we operate a very hybrid working policy. Some people are in the office. Some people are at home. We had team meetings today where half the team are here half a team are dialing in, that creates a whole new set of challenges for leaders around bias. You know, there's a whole new bias now around having people work from home and having people in the office and who gets more favored and things like that. So that's a whole challenge that people are having to cope with. A new leadership challenge, you know, that was, that didn't exist 18 months ago. 18 months ago, it was everyone's at home now you have this new challenge of everyone being disparate and some people being here and some people being at home. And I think that in itself shows you how fast the world is evolving. And in, we don't know in six months time what the next challenge is going to be with the way that the world events are unfolding, et cetera. So I think that there are so as a leader now, the agility that you need to have in the constant change, you know, VUCA, which I'm sure you know, you know about, uh, and the listeners here know about about the volatility and uncertainty that, that exists in the world. I was I was talking about that eight nine years ago. VUCA then compared to VUCA today is a whole different ballgame. We operate in so much more complexity, so much more uncertainty, and I think as a leader, it's becoming even more challenging. And that's why the the growth and acceleration of a, an organization like Ezra which offers that support that's so personalized you know Jack if if you had an Ezra coach and if your colleague Emma had an Ezra coach you're both going through such different things this week that you're going to need different types of support and what we're seeing is that more traditional leadership programs which teach you a certain way to manage things are not as relevant because, because it, you, you, can't, you can't teach someone for what's gonna happen in the next two weeks, let alone what's gonna happen in the next two years. And I think that's why the personalized nature that a coach offers you that's now completely accessible is why the platform and the service offering that we offer our clients is growing so fast. You know, it's so interesting, too, when you mentioned about golf, the sporting analogy is really apt because to me, I always wondered, it didn't make sense where well, you could find a great baseball player, all star, amazing person, and then they kind of retire and they put him in as a manager or, or you know, so in other capacity or maybe front office. And you presume or the owners presume because they're a great baseball player, they're going to be a great manager or a great front office person. And oftentimes it's not the case because you just can't put that person in without any training, without any coaching, without any mentorship and just say, oh, okay, now you're going to succeed in this new endeavor. And oftentimes you would find that the person who is that great athlete fails at that in a way it's not their fault because no one, you know, you didn't have an Ezra to say, wait, 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 before we take you in this new position, Let's, let's give you some coaching so you know how to manage people. Because if you were a player, you were an individu individual contributor. You know, you were great, you know, you're yeah. a great hitter, a great fielder. But now you have to be a great manager. Those skills may not cross over. So you kind of have to be completely retrained in a bit. 
Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I, I think it's important, you know, coaching isn't, isn't training per se, mm -hmm. but there are, if I think about a client of ours, and again, uh, I'm allowed to share, you know, Kraft Heinz is a huge user of Ezra, very proud that they were one of the, the first ever clients to use the platform. And there's a famous thing about the Kraft Heinz culture, and I'm, I'm sure they don't mind me sharing that they are incredibly ambitious and they they will promote um maybe less experienced people into senior roles in it, who have all the right attributes and all the right attitudes to do that role but it's a stretch and and they're very proud of that culture and stretching their people in terms of being able to offer incredible support to them to be help them then fulfill those roles and they're an incredibly successful company and one thing that they do when they put someone in that role is they give them a coach because uh, you know you, you've got all the right attributes you've got the skills you've got the ambition you've got the drive you've got the motivation having now a coach to help maybe uh, to help maybe trim the gap or give you the confidence or give you the support that you need as you move into this new very large leadership role is something that that they're that they're proud to do and something that we're proud to support with but i think you know i i can tell you i've i've and i don't know we're we're live on linkedin but i don't mind sharing this you know i, I was the ceo at a very young age um and i you know often struggled with the ability to have the confidence to really stand up in front of a room of hundreds of people and lead with that courage and conviction and confidence that you need as a leader. You know, you need to show that confidence to your people. And I was given a coach 10 years ago, mm -hmm. you know, in the, in, in the traditional way, I, I had a coach who helped me massively. And we used to meet once a month for 90 minutes in our offices. And I'd come out of that meeting with loads more confidence. And I think that maybe also having a coach myself through my career has influenced us to what we do at Ezra, because I can see, I can see the impact it's had on me. Um, and, and now we're seeing in the, in the thousands of clients that we're supporting the impact it's having on them and in, and then in turn on the organizations that they work for. Now, here's a, a different take though. How does it feel? Is it, was it, did you actually need a coach or how does it work where you're part of the ADECO brand, which is what the largest talent agent staffing agency in the world and say, okay, we're going to do something completely different and we're going to kind of disrupt everything. <laughs> and does that, did you need a coach to help? Okay. How do you do that without stepping on toes or, or, or crossing lines or make that happen because <laughs> that got to be a little like dangerous yeah. right to kind of say all right yeah. we're going to do something completely different absolutely and and you know i i i'm not i'm not i'm not i'm and the cool thing is i'm not afraid to tell the story because i think it's uh it's the most incredible story from a from a large corporate perspective and if there's anyone listening here who who works in a a large multinational organization that sometimes struggles with innovation and struggles with really pushing the boundaries and disrupting. I think what we've done within the ADECO group is, is really quite outstanding and, and took a lot of courage. Um, and really, you know, ADECO have a, an amazing business, a business I, I, I'm very proud to have, have run in the UK called LHH that's phenomenal and, and continue to be phenomenal in what they do and really it took a lot of courage three years ago for them to see and again remember this is before covid this is before the world went virtual we saw an opportunity to democratize coaching we saw an opportunity to give it to more people than just the executive and really open up the market. But there was a nervousness, of course, at the time, whereas if we truly democratize coaching and make it available for everybody, then could that disrupt our executive coaching business? And I, I, and I think what, what a lot of companies might have done is, is, is seen the opportunity, but might have been too frightened to go and, and do it. And I think one of the things that ADECO saw is that disruption was on its way 
And we might as well disrupt ourselves than being disrupted. And what they did is they they knew that the the challenges of being a big being part of a large corporate and the bureaucracy that would come with that um, would be. So they they separated us to some extent. They they put us in an incubator. They put us in a separate office. They put us under slightly different governance and allowed us to to really innovate and make mistakes and excel and invest and in growth and really have a growth mindset um, and, and almost protect us from some of the challenges that might have got us stuck in the mud or stuck on certain things or you know 18 meetings to get approvals and again people listening might be quite familiar with that so we were lucky enough to to be separate from that at the same time using the incredible assets that they have as an organization you know lhh has 2000 coaches who are accredited all over the world in 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 countries from thailand to America, to Italy, to UK, to I think, I think 68 different countries they had coaches in. So, so my challenge is really quite simple. How do I take the amazing assets that LHH and ADECO have, including these amazing coaches, this amazing track record, a roster of thousands of organizations that have grown to trust the brand and trust the organization and combine it with technology and startup and agile and and challenging business models and if you put those two things together what could you create and 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 the result was was the fantastic growth that we've had at Ezra but of course it, it came with a few challenges but I think I think you know every corporate in the world has amazing assets having a a a disruptive mindset is the challenging part because if if every organization had a disruptive if 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 hilton had a disruptive mindset they would have built airbnb they would have seen that this this organization there's a, there's, there's a world out there of all these apartments that we could also have and find a way of doing this and of course it's a challenge right it's it's a challenge for them to do that because it's disrupting their own their own business but of course, I'm sure right now, if you said to them, you could have had that and you could have done that, they would have probably bitten, bite your arm off. And I think what ADECO have done is they've done that. They've, they've built their own Airbnb within the group that's now thriving, that now is actually adding huge value, not taking any value away from what LHH does at all, just adding huge value to them and the group. And I think that, that we're now reaping the rewards. But it didn't come without its challenges. There were many people during that journey who were frightened, who were nervous, who who had challenges with it, and and we and we got them on board, and we got them on side, and and I, I suppose I live to tell the tale, which is one one good thing, and and so do our clients. Most importantly, you know, there are now hundreds of thousands of people all over the world that are benefiting from coaching, and their organisations are growing as a result of it. Uh, and it's not easy to do because coincidentally, just recently I spoke to Ross Burdoff, who is uh, the CEO founder of Zen Business, a unicorn company. But before that, he was involved as chief technology officer and co-founder of Verbo. And what happened is that when, when Airbnb came around, he was like, wait, we got to do something. Let's either buy them out. Let's do the same thing there. And did Matt, from what he was telling me, that the senior executives were like, no, it's not going to be anything. No, don't worry. We're going to stick to it. And imagine if they would have bought them out back then, or they would have just emulated what they were doing. So it's not easy when you have this big infrastructure. And all these years later, I could tell he was a little still salty that they didn't want to take his advice and do it because you just get so complacent with these big organizations. It's hard from within to say, wait, we're doing well, we're successful, but we could do even better. Let's do it. And so I give you credit that you had the courage to do that because it's too easy to say, no, nah, we're okay. We're doing good. We don't have to do yeah, this. I mean, I mean, I, 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 I would actually give the credit to them. You know, yes, we had the idea, we pushed it, but just like Verbo, they could have been comfortable 
Um, they could have seen the potential disruption on their own business, mm -hmm. um, but they were brave and it does take courage. They were brave enough to see the bigger picture and the future. And, and I think that that, that takes huge, I can't think of a, a, of a, a, what's the word? I can't think of the most appropriate word to mm -hmm. use. But it takes huge courage, put it that way, yeah. to, to do what they did. And there are so many organizations that, that wouldn't and, and won't. Um, and I think hats off to the ADECO group for really making that that bet. And that bet for now is certainly is paying off. And there's, a, there's another element here, which I really enjoy, is that the narrative, and I'm not sure how it is in, in, in the UK and Europe, but here, the great resignation is, you know, the topic of conversation. Just today, I think another 4.5 million people quit their jobs and left. And what ends up, what I think in part happens, it feeds on itself that, hey, you have to quit and leave, where for some, that might be the right thing to do. But for many, it may not. For many, it makes sense to say, wait, before I leave, let's see how can I advance within the organization? And because you know, the media narrative is people quitting, people quitting, people quitting. You know how it is. Like you get caught up in it. You, just, you know, you, you speak to family and friends. If you're not happy, there's, oh, just quit, you know, come on, leave. Because that's the thing to do. But I feel for a lot of people, they might be better off saying, wait, before I leave, let me see. Maybe I can get some coaching. Maybe I can get, you know, some some way to advance. Let me try that first. Let's see, you know, yeah. to in my opinion, I think that's probably a better option rather than leaving. Let's see. Let me first speak to my boss, say, hey, what do you have plans for me? Is there is there a path moving forward? Do you have confidence that I can grow? And if so, let's do it. Let you know, I I'll be loyal and I'll stay and grow through the organization. And I think and one of the things interesting, Nick, there are a couple of studies, one by Harvard and one by this group uh, called the Muse Group, which is a career site, and both found out <laughs> through the surveys that a significant percentage of people who quit within like three months regretted the move, which kind of says that like maybe they just got caught up in this wave of like, hey, let's just say, F it, let's quit, let's leave, let's move on, instead of saying, wait, 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 how can we advance with the organization? And I don't know how you feel about it, but I think by having the coaching element, that gives somebody a way to say, wait a minute, I don't necessarily have to quit. There's another avenue. I don't have to leave yeah. and start over and worry about maybe I'm the last one in, first one out. Let's see if I could, I owe it to myself to see if I can make it happen here first. Let's see if I can, does that make sense? Absolutely. And, and you know, given, given what is going on in the world right now with retention and the challenges in retention and, and obviously attraction, We've run a lot of studies on this. And, and the first thing I'd say before I kind of talk about the, the results is, you know, there, there's a few elements as to why coaching helps this. One is obviously what you described, you know, helping you figure out that actually within this organization, it's better for me to stay because now I've talked it through with somebody professional. I can understand that there are many other areas I can work in this business. There's huge places I can advance. And actually I've realized I'm really good at X and Y. And if I maybe just get that across in a more effective way, then there's a way in which I can get that role that I really want to get. So that, that's, that's, that's an obvious reason why coaching really helps people identify their careers. Um, and I, and then in, in a, in inevitably stay in the organization, but there's a couple of other things. The second uh, and and one of the, another area is, you know, people generally. And there's a lot of studies. You know, you, there's that phrase, you you don't leave a company, you leave your boss. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that that we work on, a lot of our clients ask us to do is, is help managers become better coaches themselves. So, a manager has an Ezra coach to become a better manager and a better coach. And by making managers better coaches, then those managers can have really good chats with their people. You know, hey, Jack, you know, rather than once a year in an appraisal, once a month, how's it going? What's up? What are you looking to do in your career? How can we help you? Um, let me give you some feedback. Let me listen to you. There's loads and loads of areas 
that people can help in when they're a good leader and, and, and when you have a coach or a bad leader. So organizations are giving Ezra to leaders because they know it can impact retention in the, in the, uh, in the teams that those managers run. And then the third thing, which is slightly more intangible, is just the general kind of uh, credibility and, and, and benefit that people see by having a coach. You know, you are some of Ezra's employees. So at Ezra, you're not probably surprised to hear that every single one of our staff has an Ezra coach. No matter what level they are working at Ezra, you get a coach. And I know that, that when we do, I, I always check in with people after three months in the organization. And I ask them, some of, you know, what are you enjoying? How's it going? What can we do better? They often say well, one of the coolest things about working in this company is I get a coach. And I think that when organizations give it, it's a bit like when they give health care or when they give good pension plans or, or 401k in, in America, they, having an Ezra coach is seen as a, as a great benefit. And we see the results. You know, we we run a we run a questionnaire at the end of every uh, at the end of every um, Ezra program that we run, and we say, you know, are you more likely to stay in the organisation as a result of having Ezra? I think seventy seven percent of people say they're more likely to stay when they have an Ezra coach. And that that's one that's one way of looking at it. The other way of looking at it is we do studies now a year on. And we look at an A-B test of people in, let's say, a management population where half of them received an Ezra coach. And for one reason or another, the other half didn't. And we see that in the group of people that got an Ezra coach, those people, they have an 11% lower attrition rate. So essentially, you're 11% more likely to stay. And, and we've now got data that shows whether people stayed or not. When you have an Ezra coach, then when you don't, that's not 1% or 2%. There's quite a significant difference of, that, of actual people that, that left those that did have a coach and those that didn't have a coach. And I think, you know, that's, it's certainly a, a huge enabler. We have clients wanting to, to buy Ezra now purely for retention purposes. It makes a lot of sense, Nick, because I find out that when a person feels they're appreciated and they're taken care of and they're empowered, they're going to stay because they, they feel, hey, the company's making an investment in me. If they're doing that, that means they care about me. If they care about me, well, that's pretty cool. So I'm going to kind of work hard. I'm going to stay here because I want to be appreciated and I want to show my gratitude. Hey, thank you for doing this. So uh, here, here in the States, and I imagine the same, same thing's probably going on in the UK and Europe too, is that companies are really competing now to offer an array of different benefits that they didn't do before. It could be anything from you know, fitness apps to mental health apps to you know, like you're doing coaching and across the board because they get it. If they don't take care of their people and they don't you know, help them thrive, they're gonna just leave. So you, you, know, you have it. And then conversely, if somebody gets these kind of extra things, maybe it's a no Zoom on Fridays, maybe it's you're shutting down the office for a week so you could disconnect and refresh. That's going to make more people stay. So I think that's part of it. And then I wonder too, talk about disruption. I don't know if there's another disruption right now for you, but I can tell you here in the US, uh, mental health issues like off the charts, burnout off the charts. So I don't know is another disruptive sector would be some sort of kind of therapy help. And I'm not being facetious saying that because, wow, it's, it's, really, it's, it's really palpable here in the US. You know, you can see it on yeah. social media. You can see it, Absolutely. the videos that pop up. It's, it's and then I'd thing. say it's, 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 it's sad, right? It's, it's, um, it's not good. I, I've seen it. I, I've seen it with friends, with family. And it's a serious thing when people get burnt out. And, um, you know, I, I would say I don't think we need to create a mental health or, a, or another headspace or another calm. You know, I can tell you from personal experience, Ezra has a huge impact on my mental health. Um, being able to talk to somebody about my work challenges, about my challenges in work-life balance is hugely, hugely helpful to me and my well-being. And, and I'd actually say, and it might sound cliche, but 
it doesn't just make me a better CEO. I think it makes me a, a better partner to my, to, my, to my wife. It makes me a better father to my children. And I think that it's a, it's a, it's a ripple effect. You know, our, our global master coach, um, Tom Wright, talks about the ripple effect. And the ripple effect that Ezra has, not just on, on the individual that receives it, but everybody around them. You know, if, if I get home tonight and I'm in a better frame of mind and I sit down at dinner with my kids and we have a good conversation and I'm more curious and I'm more engaging and I'm calmer and I'm better, then my kids are better and calmer and we have a better conversation. We probably, we might even find out something about that happened at school today that we wouldn't find out if I got home and I was yeah. in a bad mood because something at work had really impacted me. And then, and then my kids go into school tomorrow in a better frame of mind. And I think that we can never forget, and at Ezra, we talk about this, the ripple effect all the time, and not just on my mental health, but on the mental health of everyone around me. So I would say, I don't think actually, Jack, we need to create anything new to disrupt the market, because I think a huge impact of what Ezra does is on mental health and well-being. Well, that's great. And for people who want to find you, how can they website do you personally? How does that work? Yeah, so so I'm on LinkedIn. So so please feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. But more than that, we have a, a website, uh, helloezra.com, H-E-L-L-O-E-Z-R-A.com. We actually rebranded recently because we really wanted our brand to come to the fore and and show people i think you can see behind me this isn't a false background <laughs> this is this is very real um grow greatness is something that we're incredibly proud of what we do and our, and our brand really reflects that so our website has all of the information on there about not only how to work with ezra how to work for ezra how to become an ezra coach um there's a huge stream of information on there and feel free to look us up there or connect with me directly on LinkedIn. That's fantastic. I, I really appreciate you taking the time, Nick, because what I'd love to do with this podcast is to bring new ideas, new concepts, innovations, new platforms, new apps to people. Because what I'm seeing, and you see the same thing, what you do, there's a hunger now saying, hey, life is not what it used to be pre-pandemic. It's changed. And I want to change with it. I don't want to get left behind. And as bad as it was, it seems like so many cool things are happening that people could really empower themselves and grow their careers and do better and make the best out of it. So, so what you're representing is a way for people to improve their lives. Like you're saying, because if I, and I agree with you, by the way, that if you could improve the quality of how you work, when you get home, you're going to just be a better person. And it's just logical. You're going to be a better person. Everyone's going to pick up on that vibe. And this way, everybody yep. around you is going to feel better too. So, so I'm, I'm really glad you're sharing it. I hope for people who are watching it, you know, found this really interesting and feel free to, to take a look and learn more about it. And, uh, and yeah, and definitely I'd love to keep in touch and see how it's going and how it's growing. So thank you very much. Absolutely. For your time, Nick. And, and thank you, Jack. Um, I'll speak to My you pleasure. soon. Thanks very Excellent. much. My pleasure. Take, take care. care. Bye-bye.